Welcome back to Bunter Jard. Um, so this is a request today. I've been asked to show my airbrush setup. And um, now I'm by all no means an expert in uh, airbrushing, um, but um, people just last. So here we are. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what I do, the kit that I use. Um, now this is mainly aimed at railway modelers because that's what the channel is uh, is about. So there may be references to, to railway modeling and definitely an example at the end, which is definitely railway. But some of these, um, you know, uh, the techniques will, will carry over into different um, different genres of modeling, so military modeling and so on. But um, yeah, today is mainly about uh, railway modeling. So, um, this is the kit I use, and this is the um, Iwata Neo, which is a, um, a kind of, it, it's quite relatively inexpensive in the grand scheme of things. Um, where airbrush is concerned, this is about less than ninety pounds, which is which is not a lot of money really for a, for a good airbrush. But this is you know fairly decent for the money. Um, this is definitely one to, to have a look at. So I would definitely consider these. But airbrushes, you can pay literally up to thousands of pounds for, for a good airbrush. But for modeling, um, it may be a bit overkill. If you're a, a true artist and stuff, you may want to spend more. Um, there obviously are cheaper ones on Amazon, and we're going to have a look at those next week to see what you can actually get for £16. Pounds. Um, not holding that much hope, but we'll give it a go anyway. So let's say this is the uh, Neo Fire for Iwata, which is a, a licensed um, airbrush. So it was made probably in China for uh, for Iwata, which is quite a big uh, airbrush company. And this has got a 0.35 mil nozzle, I believe, uh, which is uh, kind of somewhere in the middle. And it's, it's kind of a good general uh, purpose um, nozzle and a needle. Um, the good thing about these is you can buy replacements as well. So if you do damage it, then you can replace it. If you go for the cheap models, the cheap uh, things from Amazon, really got to throw them in the bin. Now I've had this for about sort of six months and it's lasted me well. It's done really well. It's um, it's never really let me down. Once you once you kind of uh, hone it all in and you, you get used to thinning your paints in a particular way, um, it's it, it's just very reliable. It gets a, a good clean once every week or two, and um, really doesn't doesn't clog. So uh, I'm quite um, quite lucky. I've done it done quite well, but I, I'll put the link for this one in the description. Certainly have a look at this if you're considering an airbrush for um, for any sort of modelling, and particularly for our railways. Um, it, it does um, does everything that we need. So uh, the cup that I'm pointing to there is on this one is actually um, you can take it off and change it. On lots of them, you uh, you can't actually take the cup off. It's it's sort of a part of them, the airbrush. And this is what they call a dual action airbrush, which is quite important. Um, so with the first press down, just the air will come through through the uh, through the braided hose that you see from the compressor and it will blow out at the end. And if you pull it back, then the air will start to uh, drop down from the gravity feed. And you'll start to get paint coming out the end, which is uh, obviously the desired effect. Some of the cheaper airbrushes are not uh, gravity fed. There'll be a bottle hanging underneath and they work a little bit differently. Um, probably, uh, I would probably tend to avoid those, but anyway. Now on this one, you can take off the little uh, bit on the end and expose the needle, which is very sharp. Try to dig it in your fingers, it does hurt. Um, but if you take that off, you, you can even get a finer spray. Um, or I'll show you that in a moment. But um, we need to take it off from time to time to clean the to clean the uh, the brush down um, because that's where the clog is going to appear, just there at the end. Um, but if you've got that cap off, it will clog more readily. So just be aware of that. Let's pop that back on for a for a moment while we can carry on. Now 
Now, as I say, this one comes with uh, actually comes with two cups when you buy it from uh, from Iwata. So the small cup on the top, which I've used for nearly every job that I've done, it doesn't look particularly large, but trust me, um, it will do most things that you're going to want to do. Um, but it does unscrew; it comes off. Uh, it does make the airbrush uh, a bit easier to clean when that's off. Uh, but it just, uh, yeah, screws on and off very easily like that. Uh, if you're only using a very tiny amount of paint, you don't even need the cup. You can literally just put a one or two drops straight into the brush there. And there's the bigger one. Um, it still is not huge, but uh, if you filled that up, you would uh, you would cover a lot with that. So if you're doing ballasting, um, if you're painting your tracks, for instance, you may want to use something like that. Um, leave the lid on just make sure that airway on the top is uh, is clear otherwise it won't uh, the, the paint won't come out you'll get a vacuum inside but yeah most of the time I have used the small one I probably used the big one maybe twice when I've been doing you know a bulk of uh, of painting of uh, wagons or so on now for cleaning um, or if you get a blockage then you're going to need to take your brush to pieces and it's very simple to do uh, there's, they're not particularly complicated the first time you do it, it's a bit nerve wracking um, there's a little nozzle at the end, a little brass nozzle where the, where's the, the jet where the needle put, put through and that unscrews with the little tool you get there um, and to take the, the, the whole needle out literally just take it out the back there and that's, that's all there is to it basically there's not really many parts to this and if you get a blockage, it's probably going to be um, in the jet or the needle is going to be um, have dried paint in it somewhere. So just take it out, give it a brush with some thinners and you're good to go. But if you clean your brush down after each time you've used it properly, um, you shouldn't really run into any problems. So now, once you've got your airbrush, you're going to need a few extra bits to get going. So you're going to need some paint. Uh, and I recommend Vallejo, uh, this is Model Air, so it doesn't need any thinners but um, I would still suggest you buy some thinners at the very least to clean your brush but you may want to thin your brush, you thin your paints down even further you can get airbrush cleaner which is a, um, slightly different you don't want to use that for thinning obviously um, but uh, you can use that if you're going to get any stubborn sort of blockages you're going to need a brush because you will uh, need that to stir your paint once it's in there if you're going to thin it or if you're going to mix your colours uh, once they're inside so any brush will do, I probably wouldn't use this particular brush for that um, I just, just one of the cheapest ones that I could find maybe buy a, a pack of ten from the pound shop um, and you're just using it to mix paints and, uh, and to clear out any sort of stubborn bits of paint that are stuck in your airbrush. Um, I use pipettes, as you know, to flush the airbrush through. If you watched the video last week, I'll put the link up top there. Um, then you can see how I use the pipette and how I do washes in between colours. And um, like most things in modelling and uh, anything that we do, lots of lots of paper roll. So I've got rolls of uh, this uh, this blue roll. I use that for lots of things, cleaning and for testing. So the other thing that people ask uh, lots of questions about is the compressor. Now this is, um, I bought this from Amazon four or five years ago. It is probably the cheapest one that I could find at the time. Um, they're about 70 pounds or something now, something like this. They look the same. They all look the same, and they probably are pretty much the same. Um, but they're just different prices. So have a little look, and uh, I'll, I'll put a few links down the below to search for. Now this particular one uh, doesn't have a tank, although it looks like it got a tank on it. It doesn't have a tank, which makes them quite a lot larger. But by having a, um, a tank, basically all you do, it would store the air in that tank and then the compressor would just come on from time to time, really, really occasionally, when the pressure's getting low. But most of the time with these types of compressors, the pump will be running, running a lot. 
So there's the on-off, and that is the water trap. There's really all there is to it. There's not a lot to these. Now the moisture trap, or the water trap, is this piece on the end, and this catches the moisture that's going to be in the air that's compressed, um, rather than the water going up the, uh, the braided hose and out of your airbrush. It catches it in the little trap there. Um, so it's essential to have that on. Um, most of these types it will be there. Sometimes they'll be online, so they'll be right on the end of your airbrush. Uh, as a little, little glass bottle underneath that. Now this is a replacement um, uh, moisture trap. Generally they're in uh, pounds per square inch PSI. This one isn't, it's in um, bar or kilograms per cubic centimeter or something like that. Um, but I know that if I'm at about one, so in between the sort of the 0 and the 0 0.2, so if I'm 0.1, I'm about 15 PSI, so one bar. Uh, which is 15 psi so generally speaking i'm going to be between um sort of one and the two basically that's that's the working range for most of what we do and from time to time you just need to take off that um cover there which is plastic on this one just unscrew it empty empty the water out the water will catch in there uh just give it a, a wipe around and then pop it back on and that's kind of all the servicing you're ever going to want to do on a compressor. So I'll put some uh, paint into our brush. Now this is uh, Vallejo Model Air and you can see the further away from the paper you get the broader the stroke you're going to get. Um, so we're set on about 20 psi at the moment and just by using the, um, the the trigger at the top we can let more or less air um, and more or less paint come through it so it's a combination of the two it takes a little bit of getting used to um, but really not that tricky so uh, I would I would test on a piece of paper uh, or on a scrap model definitely start with just get the hang of how it works and you can see when you get close, and if you do it, um, if you release the paint very slowly, you've got much more control. So you've got uh, small dots there, and we can do runs, and we take the cap off. The, uh, the line will be even finer, so we get quite close. And then just a small bit of pressure. And it takes a while to work out where that sort of biting point is, like driving a car, you know, when you find the, the biting point on the clutch. And suddenly you'll find it and it becomes like a sort of muscle memory but you can see how fine you can paint um, with the airbrush and if you're doing things like runs you can see there you're just starting to appear they're going to be fairly faint on your model anyway you're not going to want them too uh, too dark and too sort of uh, vivid on your model so again it's just a bit of practice so I suggest that you start with uh, with something like this, which is uh, unfortunately out of focus. Sorry about that. Um, but this is a Graphar um, LMS coach, and so the bottom there. So we're just using a really broad stroke. Um, so we're using it quite far away, and the pressure's up at 20, about 20 psi on this particular one. And then we can just do um, so they're really broad strokes, and we're not trying to cover. Um, the, the paint, we're not trying to change the colour of it, we're just trying to add on that, the splashes of the mud and the grime up the side of the coach. And if you want to colour in a bit more, get more some paint on, uh, get more paint on the, like on the bogies, um, you can have it, hold it closer and uh, just give more, um, let more paint through, just, just press the the trigger down further and then across the top on the roof for instance again nice broad strokes we're not going to give it sort of th full throttle as such and then by reducing the uh, pressure so we're going down to maybe 10 or 15 psi and again, like I say, just trying to find that, 
that point where the, the paint will start to come out of the brush and you can then do runs and if you take the uh, the nozzle off again you can do it even finer and generally the speaking the overspray that's on the roof I would have uh, I would clean off anyway And with the um, the cap off, your um, your airbrush might sort of clog up more than it would otherwise. Um, so just pop that back on, give it a little clean, and yeah, we could do some more runs. This is um, I wouldn't generally use this colour. This is uh, sand, um, which is really really light. But I'm just doing that just to show, uh, just so you can see what we're what we're achieving. So we're just doing really, really gentle and uh, um, not too heavy strokes to achieve the sort of the marks of the runs and so on. So this is uh, so on the roof. You may want to do some sort of water marks or some some soot. So you choose whatever colour you'd want, either a, an off-white or maybe even a dark grey-black to uh, to simulate either rain or um, or soot around these vents. But it's really just a matter of practice. Take your time. Uh, a nice low pressure. If you have got a double action airbrush, which you probably will have, then you need to press down to let the air come out and then once the air is starting to flow then you will pull back on the trigger ever so slightly until the paint starts to come out as well um, and then when you finish that you need to let the paint stop but keep the air going so you release the trigger so you let the trigger go forward um, which stops the paint and then the air keeps on going and by doing that it will stop your brush clogging um, because what happens is that you end up getting paint stuck in the jet if you don't do that. If you do need to clean your uh, airbrush midway and it's uh, never a, a problem if you need to do that, I would use um, probably uh, something like a brush or maybe even a cotton bud and you need to clean it in there and that's where it's going to block where the needle um, comes through. So I would use uh, just a damp uh, brush, whoosh it around in there. Whoosh, is that the word? I'm not sure. Um, and then give it a little blast and then continue painting. Uh, the other thing you can do is if it's a bigger blockage, put your finger over the end of the uh, of the nozzle and that will create a, a, a back blast. So put your finger over, give it some pressure and you can see the that it bubbles back in and it's basically blowing back anything from the that might be stuck in the nozzle. So that's uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, a very ba basic um, one today, but it's just I think that's been I've been asked to uh, to do. So uh, I hope that gives you a few pointers. Any questions down below, please uh, leave them in the uh, in the uh, comments, and if I can help, I will. Uh, definitely reply or do another video if uh, if that's possible so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time at Bunter's Yard